and welcome to our GCSE OCR Psychology Revision video for the Tandoc study that appears in the Psychological Problems section of the Year 10 content. So this is the study that looks at how we use Facebook and to see if there's a link between Facebook use and depression, particularly among college students. So teenage years can be particularly difficult in terms of mental health and there is lots of research that has looked at why these 18 to 24 year olds, this kind of late teenage years, early adulthood might be particularly um, difficult for some teenagers and why some teenagers might be vulnerable to developing depression during these times. So there are lots of things going on in a young adult's life, things like leaving home, now, whether that's going to university or whether it's leaving home and setting up home on their own, uh, it can be making new friends, um, again, going away to university and, and being away from old friends, making new friends. It can be about relationships, going from um, teenage relationships to more adult relationships, learning to be independent, being away from parents, having to cope with money and um, household chores and those kind of things. And then on the top of all of that, if there is still studying to be done, there can be immense pressures from studying as well. All of this can combine to a lot of teenagers around this age uh, struggling with mental health conditions and depression. So around 2010, there was um, lots of uh, unrest in terms of financial unrest in America and across um, other countries in the world where there were lots of financial difficulties in large companies. That had a big knock on with families and um, redundancies and uh, people being out of work and, and having um, problems with income. And that has led to um, lots of studies being taken up around this time to look at what might be contributing to depression and if there's anything that contributes more than, than other things. So Tandoc suggested that there were um, a collective of things, a, like a, a group of things that could be causing depression in teenagers. And um, the three of them are listed here on this slide. So the first one is that there is better diagnosis to mental health issues. Now, this may mean that there isn't necessarily more young people with mental health issues um, in uh, modern society. It may just be that we're better at recognising it um, because we now count and we make a note of how many people are diagnosed, then that means that there appears to be more. It could be that there is more focus on mental health in students. It's certainly more um, talked about uh, in modern society than it was for previous generations. And it's become acceptable to say out loud that you have mental health condition, where before it was um, very shameful and it wasn't something that was talked about. The key bit for this study is um, where Tandoc suggests that there may be links to social media use, how we use social media, how our young people use social media and the use of technology in everyday life and how that might be contributing to mental health conditions like depression. In terms of previous research, it's a little bit confusing because we have research that says that Facebook can promote happiness. And we have research that says there's no correlation between Facebook and depression. And then we have other research that says there is a significant positive correlation, um, specifically between the amount of hours spent on Facebook and developing depression. So as the hours are increasing, then the levels of depression are increasing. So in terms of what the previous research says, it's very confusing because we've got three opposing viewpoints. So what Tandoc wants to have a look at is which of these maybe um, we can support with some more research evidence. In terms of where this fits in with our course, well, our evolutionary theory of depression is the social rank theory. Now, this is the idea that depression is there to keep us in our correct social rank. So we can't all be top of the food chain. Um, we need to be some, you know, one person is the leader of the group and the rest of us need to be the, the worker ants, so to speak. So the idea of social rank is that we are all in our rightful place and there is enough resources to go around and we're not competing for those top resources. 
if we fail to reach the top of the social um, situation, then we would have to be a subordinate. Now, we can become envious of other people higher up the food chain than us. There are people that we might view as more successful. And the suggestion is it's the envy then that can lead to depression because we would like to be as successful or as popular as they are, but we can't. Uh, so we are in a lower social rank, so therefore we are envious of people in higher social ranks. So the link to Facebook comes in when we see other people's achievements on Facebook. It's a platform where people share the best parts of their life, the most interesting parts of their life. Um, and it would seem that uh, for some people looking just at those um, interesting achievements of other people, um, can lead to envy and um, the suggestion is that envy would lead to depression. So in terms of this particular study then, there are two aims. They are the aim to see whether Facebook can lead to depression, whether we can link it to the social rank theory, or whether more specifically it's Facebook that can lead to those subordination and feelings of envy, which in turn can lead to depression. So there's two ways that this could go based on the previous research. So we'll see if Tandoc can sort out which one of these is a best explanation. So there are three hypotheses for this piece of research. Now, don't forget, when we've got previous research, the hypotheses can be directional. They can predict which way we think we're going to go. And the, um, we've got some directional hypotheses here based on that previous research. So heavy Facebook user would report feelings, feeling higher levels of envy than light Facebook users. So that goes with the previous research we've looked at and also with our social rank theory. Users with a larger network of friends would also report feeling higher levels of Facebook envy than users with smaller networks. So again, this idea that if we are watching more people's achievements on Facebook, that may lead to envious feelings. Those who report feeling higher levels of Facebook envy would also report more symptoms of depression. So then again, we're looking for links between the envy for envious feelings and the clinical depression. So this was an online self-report survey, which for um, modern uh, teenagers would seem like a really easy way of carrying out research. It did mean that Tandoc could have a, a really good sample size. So 736 Midwestern University students Average age was 19 and there were more females than males, that's 68% females um, compared um, with males. So a little bit higher, not too much to cause us the problem. These were the sorts of questions that the students were filling in online. So they were looking at how many hours a day we spend on Facebook and um, they split this down into different activities. So things like writing their own status and posting photos but also then things like commenting on friends' posts. Um, they also then split it into things like reading news feeds or reading a friend's status updates or viewing friends' timelines. Because don't forget, one of the things we're looking for is how much envy there is of what other people are doing. So are you using Facebook to post your own achievements or are you spending more of your time looking at other people's achievements? Students then filled in a questionnaire that measured envious feelings. And these weren't necessarily about Facebook. These were just envious feelings in general. And you can see some of the things we've got on here is I generally fear in feeling fear to others. It sometimes doesn't seem fair that some people seem to have all of the fun. And right down at the bottom, we've got things like life is fair. How much do you agree, disagree or agree with those feelings? In terms of a measure for depression, um, this uh, Centre for Epidemial Studies depression scale was used. It's a well-known uh, measure of depression. 20 questions asked about their symptoms associated with depression. Uh, and it would ask for things like um, your quality of sleep, um, are you having problems with your appetite, and general feelings that would be associated with depression. Now, this wasn't a diagnosis of depression, um, but it was a questionnaire that would tell us about depressive feelings. Now, in terms of results, there's a lot of results from this study, and it's because there were three different hypotheses. 
So what I've tried to do here is link the results to the hypothesis so you can see which ones are supported and not supported. So the first thing we've got is that heavy Facebook users showed stronger feelings of envy. That's not a surprise. They are looking at more updates. They are spending more time on Facebook and um, that means that they are spending more time looking at other people's achievements rather than their own. So we could support hypothesis one. The size of the network was not linked to envy. So it didn't matter how many friends you had, it was more about what you were doing, what you were using Facebook for. So we could not support hypothesis number two. Facebook envy was a predictor of depression among students. Now that's a really important one. So it's not showing that Facebook is causing the depression, but it's showing that the use of Facebook and the way that it's used can produce envy and envy in turn can produce depression. So we can support hypothesis three. There was no significant relationship between the time spent on Facebook and depression. It was what you were doing. Um, and surveillance, looking at other people's information, it was not a predictor of depression, but surveillance can lead to envy and envy can lead to depression. So in terms of conclusions, we need to be really careful with this one. We need to make sure that we're not saying that Facebook leads to depression because that's not what the results are showing. What they are showing is that Facebook envy can lead to depression. So it's really important to make that clarification in your exam answers. In terms of social rank theory, it is useful in trying to understand how depression may occur, but specifically in college age students, when we're talking about age bias in our sample, we can't assume, although it might be true, but we can't assume that this will be the same result for other people of other age groups, other jobs in other cultures. Okay, so just to recap then, we can support our social rank theory to a certain extent in terms of if we are envious of other people's achievements, that may lead to depression. Okay, we can use Facebook to further support that in terms of if people are using Facebook to watch other people's achievements and that is causing feelings of envy, then that in turn may lead to depression. Okay, so that's the whistle stop tour of our Tandoc uh, Social Rank Facebook and Depression study. Hope you find that useful. Thank you for watching.